fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers and welcome to part three of my series on building and painting the miniatures from Aliens, another glorious day in the core. Today I'm going to show you how to paint the aliens very quickly and very easily but with great results. I really like this technique. It's simple and easy to do and they look like aliens and well that's the whole idea isn't it to have aliens painted so they look like aliens. I hope you enjoy this video. It's pretty quick and easy and you'll get your 16 um, aliens from the corset painted in record time. Enjoy! Here are my undercoated aliens. Uh, you saw in the last video that I've undercoated all these in black, which is the perfect colour for an alien, let's face it. Make sure you've got a thorough all over coverage of black and there's no original plastic showing through. This is a good basis for the paint job. So the first thing I'm going to get is Lead Belcher by Citadel. And this is going to be my base colour for the aliens, but I'm going to dry brush it on. And I'm using an old brush here with still some soft bristles on the end, and this is ideal for dry brushing. I get a bit of paper towel, get some lead belcher on my brush, and then wipe most of it off on the paper towel. So there's hardly any colour left on the brush. And I want a nice light flicking of the uh, brush over the model, just so I get the lead belcher on the raised surfaces of the alien. Be careful not to do this uh, too thickly and make sure your paint isn't too wet. You just want to uh, get this over the raised surfaces and not obscure any of the detail. That's very important. But you do want to cover the entire alien pretty thoroughly. So keep flicking this over the model. You can also use the same colour for the base, which makes it even easier because you can do the base and the model in one go. As you can see, I'm being careful not to obscure any of the detail on the model. Just give it a good overall coat. Instead of uh, putting lots of paint on, I'm just going over it and going over it until I've got enough paint on the model. Just do this very lightly, make sure you don't miss any bits, and there you have it. Now you may think, why am I painting my alien to look metal? Well, that's because aliens kind of do look me metallic in the uh, films. Um, I know they're sort of more grey, but because of the lighting and just the way they're filmed, they have this sort of strange metallic look, and trust me, it works. So null oil is what I'm going to use to wash these miniatures and of course I make sure it's thoroughly, thoroughly dry before I put this on. And I'm going to put null oil all over the figure. As usual, whenever I put on washes, you don't want it to pool too much in the recesses. So you can use a dry brush or just clean your brush off on a paper towel and then use the dry brush to soak up any excess. But for now, I'm covering the entire model with null oil. So, as I said, he does look metallic uh, in this technique, but I think it works really well for aliens. It gives them an overall silvery, creepy kind of look that just works really well. Now, I've given that a full uh, coating of null oil. I'll do the base while I'm here as well. And for that, I'm using Agrax Earthshade. And that just differentiates the two different types of metal and makes the floor plating a bit sort of greasier and older looking. There it is when it's dry. And already this looks fine for the tabletop really. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more highlighting however by using Stormhost Silver. And again I'm dry brushing with this but I want the lightest, lightest possible dry brush. So I'm really wiping off almost all of my paint. Again, I don't want this to clog any of the detail. And I'll just brush that lightly over the ridges in the top, around the face, a little bit on the ends of the hands, a bit on the shoulders, uh, just on the tips of the things on his back, and the ends of the tail. And then the last touch is just a little bit on the knees where light would catch the kneecaps, maybe a bit on the front there. And that's all you need. That just gives it a little bit more depth. And we're almost finished. Uh, Abaddon Black I'm going to use next, and this is to uh, paint some black back onto the carapace area or on his, the front of his head, where it's, I'm going to make it black and glossy. Strangely enough, in the first film, uh, his carapace or the top of his head is 
all completely smooth. And in Aliens, for some reason, that's slightly changed and it has this ridged look. Not sure why they did that, just to update the look of the Aliens. So I'm filling in that area at the front with black, making sure to keep the uh, silver ridges that are still there. And I'll just fill in the recesses between the ridges as well with black, just to reinforce that. But don't go over any of the areas that you've dry brushed. And this just deepens the black on his head area. And for some reason, just makes him look creepier. The front, which is all black like that, is a particularly creepy part of the alien, don't you think? Because there's no eyes. That's why. That's why it's so creepy. There are no eyes. When that's thoroughly dry, I get null oil again, and I'm going to run null oil just over the head area again, just to deepen that black a little bit. Make that a little bit darker. And while I'm there, I'll use the null oil just to paint into some of the recesses, just to emphasize the shadows a little bit more. Just a little bit of this, um, covering up those areas where my dry brushing has um, reduced the strength of any shadow areas. So under the neck, uh, things like that. Perhaps along the spine a little bit around the shoulders. And we're almost done. A bit of a bad and black around the rim of the miniature's base. Very easily done with a flicking motion, just like that. And here they all are. Now, if you feel this is still too light for you, you can give it another coat of null oil. Alternatively, you can do a much lighter dry brush of the initial lead belcher, just on the raised areas. Or, if you want to go for a more bluish look, you could use a blue wash over the top of the black just to give it a slight blue tint. So you can experiment with this technique and try your own variations if you like. The next thing I'm going to do is spray all these with my Tamiya uh, TS79 semi-gloss spray. And that's what I use to varnish all of my miniatures. After they've been sprayed and dried, I'm going to use this gloss varnish. You can use any gloss varnish uh, you want to buy, but I just happen to have this stuff on me. And you can see it's already the, the model has already got a bit of a semi-gloss finish from the spray. But now I'm painting a bit of gloss just on the front of the head and the mouth area. And this little touch makes it look particularly creepy. Just makes that front of his head a little bit more glossy. It works really well. This will dry, of course, to a completely clear, glossy finish. And there you have it. Super fast aliens. Now, keep in mind, I'm lighting this with an overhead light. So they look a little bit lighter than they do in real life. Um, they actually look kind of dark and creepy. And when you're playing the game, they'll look darker again. So while they might look a little bit too light in this shot, um, the actual ones are quite dark. But this technique will get those painted really, really, really quickly. You can get them on the table and start killing Marines and uh, civilians with them. That's it for the core set, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, later on, I will be painting the miniatures from the expansions as well. But for the moment, this should get you started building and painting your Aliens miniatures and enjoying the game. It's a fantastic game. I really enjoy it. Aliens, another day in the core from Gale Force 9. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. That's the Esoteric Order of Gamers, orderofgamers.com. I'm on all the social media. Subscribe, please, if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Bye.